All right. Um, what we have here now is a... Um, let's refer to it as the battery. I don't want to reveal what I have here under this box at the moment. Let's call it a battery. And this will give us, well, unlimited amps. Let's put it this way. So what I'm going to do now is I connect my... And we turn on the circuit breaker here. I have turned off our big battery here. I just want to measure everything again with this battery input now here. So let's turn this on. Okay, this is good. Nothing explodes, no smoke. We've got the red light here for the output voltage. Let's measure what we have on the input. 13.6 volts. So the output should be output should be the same, 55 volts. We have said before, right, 55 volts. So before we turn this all on here, I should dial down the constant current potentiometer here. I'm not sure how much current will actually supply now to the big battery because well, this one can supply unlimited amps. Okay, let's turn it on and see what happens. Okay, so far so good. Okay, let's measure how many amps we are getting here from the battery. 1.6 amps at the moment. Okay, let's dial this one up here with the constant current potentiometer. Okay, so slowly clockwise. 0.7, yep, here we go, 2, okay, 5.1 amps, this is what we had with the power supply as well, so we should see roughly 1 amp going into our battery here, 1.2 amps, we've got a bit of higher voltage here on this battery, that's why we have a bit higher output current here, 1.2 amps, roughly, it's roughly 5 to 1, if you are just looking at the current, all right, I would say, Let's do the unthinkable and increase the input current of the buck converter and see how far we can go. 7, yeah, let's do 10. Here we go, 10 amps. 10 amps we have. So this should give us a little bit more than 2 amps here on the output now, right? 2.3 amps, perfect. Well, let's go further. Let's dial this baby up here. There we go. We are reaching constant voltage now. I cannot, even if I dial further, the current won't increase anymore. Well, this is due to the uh, uh, power loss we have on the cables now. We've got only 2.5 millimeter cable here to uh, feed in our power to the battery. And we're already at 54.6 volts here on the big battery. So there's only point. 0.4 volts difference from the inverter now to the big battery and I need to increase I basically need to increase the voltage here put more pressure Yeah, let's increase the voltage and we should see the current going up as well yep there it goes I just increase a little bit so we are probably charging with now 60 volts or something Ooh, 16 amps going in And 3.6 coming out. It's not too bad, actually. So 45, 46. Okay, let's let's turn off the battery and see if we can. I have 42. Look at this. It really makes a difference. So this is coming from solar. And now we turn it back on. Yeah, three amps. So we are charging the big battery now from the mystery battery here. Yeah, it's getting warm. It's getting warm. Um, we should probably connect this fan here quickly, all right? I have just connected this um, PC fan here to the uh, 13 volt input. And let's put the whole electronic just on top of it. Oh yeah, it's getting warm. One of these bus bars underneath here. Yeah, that's, that's enough cooling. That's all right. Okay, we are on 17 amps already. And we just want to increase the amps a little bit more. And see what we can get. Can we get 20? 18. Oh, 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 19. No, that's it. That's the maximum. We need to increase the voltage again. Okay, and then we should see. Yep, there it goes. 20 amps. 20.5, 20.7, 20 21 amps. 
okay I just put it down to 20 21 amps it's rated for 20 so we shouldn't go any higher than 20 amps 20 amps in <laughs> nice I really like these experiments 4.1 amps going out into the big battery now oh 50 degrees here inside the the magic circle that's where the power MOSFET sits underneath Okay, so the big question is now, how good is the efficiency now? Let's find out. Okay, let's do the maths. 12.65 times 19.75. 250 watts. Yeah, we call this 250, right? 250 watts input. And the output is 55.3 times 4.1. We're getting 226, 227 say. 227 watts out. And you won't believe it, we are getting 90 point... There. Nine, where is it? There. 90.8 percent. 90.8 percent efficiency with this setup charging from the mystery battery here into our big battery with 250 watts let's see the magic circle 54 55 it's not ideal if this one sits flat on the I need more bus bars yep that's better cooling now a little bit of airflow underneath 54 which is um what is that? And 130 Fahrenheit. Still alright. Yeah, you can still touch it. That's alright. But this is insane, right? This is insane. 90.8% efficiency. For a buck converter, for an $8 buck converter. Here you can see the power conversion of our Westroof solar charge controller. The voltage conversion goes down from 75 to 55 and the amps going up from 18 to 25. So yeah, these boost controllers, they are really handy in all kinds of situations. You can also run these boost controllers directly from your solar panels and without battery. And you can connect a load like a, a little pump inside a pond in your garden, for example. And you can either use a buck converter for that to lower the voltage of the solar panel, or you can use one of these boost converters and increase the voltage to match your load. And as always, guys, I've got all these converters here on my website with links to AliExpress and Amazon. And most of them cost under $10. So they are so they're nice little electronics where you can play with and do your own little projects. And you don't even need batteries for that. Well, and now you are probably thinking, what is Andy doing with all these bug and boost converters now? What's the purpose of this, of these two videos, this one and the last one. Well, the reason is fairly simple for that because I usually use these Chinese testers here to test batteries. And this is all good and fine if we use these batteries here or if we run the battery tests with the computer and um, having these graphs up. But what about if we test larger batteries, larger battery packs like this one here, 12 volt battery mystery battery how do we discharge them and measure of course i could use the other the uh, zke tech ebc a20 i can measure batteries up to 20 amps and this is totally fine but in these larger batteries here there is well well over one kilowatt hours of energy two or three kilowatt hours sometimes and i think it's a total waste to just discharge these batteries with these testers and create heat out of this energy i mean it takes a while to charge these batteries up right i usually here I'll show you I usually I usually use these solar panels up there next to my pool fence and they are charging these batteries up over days every day a little bit until they are full and that's how i charge these batteries up to test them but discharging would totally waste the energy again creates heat and that's it and i thought well unless we are doing a graph on the computer which we need for for analyzing these batteries for whatever reason and i'm just doing a capacity test and i thought it would be good to harvest at least some of this energy back and not wasting it so this is where the idea came from using these buck converters to use the 12 volt system 
create 50 volt and push some of the energy back into our big battery. And from the efficiency, I can see this makes totally sense, right? It makes totally sense to doing that. We get, we have only 10% loss. And this was my main driver to play around with these buck converters, boost buck converters. And I wanted to start slowly because connecting something to the, to the 50 volt battery, even if you've got a fuse in between, it is a lot of power coming from the battery. If something goes wrong and you have the wrong settings here on these buck converters, you know, and I don't know how these ones react. So that's why we started with the benchtop power supply slowly. This has limited amps. We can regulate everything. And then the next test was in today's video using the big battery here to boost our voltage and charge the battery. And this seems to work totally fine. Okay guys, before I say goodbye today, I want to ask you a question. Would you solely rely on charging your battery with these inverters? No other source, just a buck converter, either a buck or a boost converter, charging your lithium iron phosphate batteries, nothing else. Would you trust this electronic, $10 electronic from China, or would you rather go with a proper solar charge controller or with a proper charger? Well, today I have a very interesting story about that and also want to pitch an idea to you. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching here. Thanks for all your support here on the channel. Stay charged and stay safe. And here comes the story. I also would like to take this opportunity to thank Philip for sending me an email a few weeks back and sharing his story with me, which I'm allowed to share with you now. So um, he was watching my videos and got inspired to build his own lithium iron phosphate battery, an 8S configuration. And he told me, and he told me he's using this new battery now in his mobility scooter because um, Philip is suffering from multiple sclerosis, which has caused severe nerve damage in his legs. Before the scooter had some horrible AGM batteries, that's what he said, horrible AGM batteries. And he got only 10 miles of range out of them. And the upgrade to lithium iron phosphate now gives him well over 50 miles of range and he doesn't need to worry about anymore running out of battery. And Philip also sent through some photos of his conversion here. We can see the battery here. He has built with all the bus bars and BMS connected. And this all sits under the seat in the mobility scooter in, inside a box. And obviously from what I can see, the, the box can be taken out. It has some small wheels on the back as well. And you can just um, yeah um, carry it behind you like a trolley. And then you plug it in and charge it. And this was actually the reason Philip contacted me. He wanted to ask me for my opinion because he's using one of these buck converters to charge this battery. And as all buck converters, they are very cheap devices and I'm not 100% confident you should actually charge a lithium iron phosphate battery with these converters solely. I, I told him, well, you can, but you need to monitor the situation with these buck converters from time to time. Because when they are getting hot, you could see a voltage drift and you could potentially overcharge your battery. Yeah, this is the, this is the picture from the charger Philip built. And you can see the display of this buck converter. Actually a pretty good work, I must say. I was really impressed about the workmanship of this charger. Yeah, and we emailed, we emailed back and forward a couple of times and Philip told me the whole story of this conversion of his mobility scooter. And he also said he bought these batteries on credit card because it was still a better deal than buying these AGM batteries every, every year. And he hopes to get at least five years life out of these lithium iron phosphate batteries now. But uh, due to uh, limited financial funding, he couldn't afford a real good charger for his batteries. And he's using this um, buck converter for the time now. You know, he made a very good statement in one of his emails and said, well, this battery is as important to me as your legs to you. Because I cannot really imagine myself being unable to walk anymore, cannot climb on the ladder on the roof and mount solar panels and carry heavy batteries here around the off-grid garage and building cabinets and and battery shelves and all this kind of stuff. So I thought we as a community here can come together and I would like to divert all my beer donations from now on to Philip 
to buy him a better charging solution. So he can charge the batteries in the best possible way and can extend the lifetime of these batteries as long as possible. He's got a 24 volt system. I looked some chargers up and found the Victron Smart Charger 24 volt whatever. It connects to your mobile phone like our chargers here as well. And you can set all the parameters for float, absorbing and it looks like pretty much the same as our chargers here. But damn, these chargers are not cheap. That's like a 350, 80 dollar Australian. It's 180 pounds or something in real money. So then I thought, well, damn it, you know, I stopped drinking beer for a while and I'm putting $100 here on the table. And I will also divert my beer donations. So I've, I have changed the wording on the website already from buy me a beer to buy Philip a charger. So all the beer donations from now on will go to this course until we have the money ready. And then we order a charger from Amazon UK and let this send over directly to Philip so he can charge it. I really don't like the idea that he uses a buck converter to charge this battery. And I would also like to take all your donation receipts I'm getting from PayPal then and print them out, put them in an envelope and send them over to Philip as well. Now, I don't, I don't know, it was just an idea to, um, to, to show him actually who are all these wonderful people who have helped him to get this charger. And we should also have a video call with him and see how he goes with his charger, right? So peeps, what do you think? $100 for me and everything else goes from your beer donations now directly to Philip's charger until we've got the money together. Hey, if we have more money than we need, I will donate the rest of the money to the Multiple Sclerosis Foundation here in Australia. Make a donation. So all the money you are giving goes either into the charger directly or goes to the Multiple Sclerosis Foundation as a donation then. Well, this is the idea I came up with. What do you say? Thank you very much for everyone chipping in for this good project. $100 from me are already in the pot. Just keep your donations coming. Thank you very much. <laughs>